As most learn in high school, the big three are replication, transcription, and translation, the way cells reproduce and function. However, post-translation, there are many modifications to the DNA, RNA, and proteins that induce different cellular responses and physiological changes. Post-translational modification of P53 is a good example of how the big three is an oversimplification of the complexity surrounding the functions of our cells. Some of these chemical modifications most have probably heard of, phosphorylation and acetylation. These not only regulate certain functions of the protein, but also are indispensable to ind essential pathways of the cell. P53 as a polypeptide can be divided into multiple domains where modifications of specific residues induce stabilization, affinity for DNA, and formation of proteomes. The stabilization of P53 is the first indication of genotoxic stress and a critical step for the proper functioning of P53. There are other signs of its full activation, such as the increased nuclear levels of the protein. With this activation, P53 can induce or inhibit transcription of many tumor repressor genes. Upstream of its activation in the current model are stresses on the cell that induces cellular response. This makes sense as a cell will want to halt reproduction or get rid of a cell that has incorrect genetic information or is damaged. Regulation of P53 can be considered the node at which many cellular pathways converge on. P53 has a short half-life and is maintained at low levels in a normal cell, existing in this off state that bound to MDM2. In complex with MDM2, P53 is targeted for degradation by the recruitment of proteins involved in ubiquitin-dependent proteolysis and nuclear export. With DNA damage, phosphorylation of P53 as serine 15 and 20 at the N-terminal region displace MDM2, promoting accumulation of P53. Some other stresses localize P53 to the nucleus, thus avoiding interaction with MDM2 and degradation altogether. This is just one example of a mechanism that stabilizes P53, elucidating there are other pathways involved in its stabilization. Following stabilization is P53's activation and its role as a transcription factor. Cetylation increases P53's affinity for P300CBP and other associated factors. The P300CBP enzymatic complex acetylates the shown residues and a lysine 320 by PCAF. But by need to promote our regions, Acetylated P53 proteins not only exhibit greater transcription levels of apoptotic genes, but also other cell cycle regulators. Acetylation of the C-terminal domain controlling P53's DNA binding potential induces a sequence-specific effect on P53 both in vitro and in vivo. It has also been shown that deacetylation is a major factor in controlling P53's stability and transcriptional activity. This inherent reversible nature of acetylation and also of phosphorylation has with it the ability to reverse the on effects. The two types of histone deacetylation shown here reduces the sequence specific binding of P53 and has shown to be involved in other pathways involving senescence and premature aging. The interesting aspect of P53 is that phosphorylation and acetylation are not so one dimensional. For example, acetylation can be induced by phosphorylation and additional N-terminal residues, including serine 33 and 37. The combinations of phosphorylation and acetylation on the different residues, with 18 found so far, are numerous and still more to be discovered. Endorsing again P53's functions are closely related to its regulation. The scientific literature also notes that a permutation of phosphorylation and acetylation produces a unique set of cellular responses. In other words, acetylation and phosphorylation together can induce the maximal efficiency of P53, a field still needing further research. Cancer, now affecting more people and causing deaths than HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria combined, it is not only a public health problem in developed countries as widely conceived, but also an increasing one in poor developing countries. As a result, cancer has extensively been researched and as a new phenomenon, cancer biology and oncology has sprung up all over the world. One discovery that still leads to understanding of cancer and creation of tumors is P53, yet this hugely accrued knowledge has not reached therapeutic approaches. 
Therefore, future research or current research may explore the selection process involving different stimuli and different responses with post-translational modification providing the necessary searches.